Maybe you've heard of Kangan Asher, maybe Kangan Omega, and even Tough. How about fighting manhwas like Boston High School and Hector Pascal? But have you heard of Fight Class 3? Looking at the manhwa cover, you'll think it's just one of the many generic fighting manhwas where there's a weak individual growing strong. But Fight Class 3 is much more complex than that. I feel like Fight Class 3 is much more than just the fighting aspect. Don't believe me? Well, you're about to find out. The manhwa starts off with a flashback to where Joji Tai and his younger sister are attending the funeral of his mother. There are whispers of his dad, Joel Daigak, who is clearly absent by renowned martial artist when suddenly he comes storming through the doors, demanding that his daughter comes to him. Jitai intervenes and his dad throws a punch. Then as soon as it hits, Jitai wakes up. He is seen working as a cashier at a convenience store. His conversation with his manager alludes to perhaps anger or a sense of inferiority at the weakness that he displays, but that is overshadowed by him enthusiastically asking for a pay rise before promptly being ignored. Already we see small moments that allude to the individual who will grow up to be in later chapters. At Nam Il High School, Ji Tai, who is a first year student, is greeted by his friends Li Jian and Na Ok Don. A fight ensues between Ji Tai and an older student, and we can witness Ji Tai's skills, dodging an experienced boxer's fist with relative ease, despite having no fighting experience. The fight is broken up by Maria Dacascos, clearly a well-known fighter. Later, she is seen questioning the student about Ji Tai and provokes a fight to test his abilities when he's going home. After witnessing his potential and his relationship with Joel Daigak, she offers to train him, to which he refuses. The following day, Maria urges him to join, provoking him by saying that this fighting experience is necessary to find his sister, to which he responds with rage. Coinciding with this moment, the student who picked the fight with Ji Tai, Kim Dong Wong, is in talks with the chairman of the school, discussing his embarrassing fight with Ji Tai. And then he is given an ultimatum. Fight Ji Tai and win or be expelled from the school. And Kim Dong Wang is left thinking of what to do with a few side comments about underhand tactics from the chairman. Panning back to Ji Tai, he eventually agrees to train with Maria in order to transfer into one of the fight classes. Yet as he makes his way home, he is caught unaware by a masked man and his ankle is broken. On the rooftop, we learn that the masked man's identity is Yang Ki Hoon a member of Fight Class 3, a class shrouded in mysterious rumours. Operating away from the publicity, that is the International Fighting Championships, speculations that its members are involved in Valtudo, a no-holds barred tournament filled with extreme violence and brutality. We learn that the only member to leave Fight Class 3 is Maria, who will train Ji Tai for his upcoming match. In the next chapters, we bear witness to the training of Ji Tai, under the watchful eyes of Maria. She teaches him the cross guard, how to dodge correctly, and Ji Tai, after utilizing his fear of getting hit as motivation for finding his sister, successfully manages to dodge Maria's punches. His friends watch on the sideline. Na Ok Don, clearly enfrailed by this, and Li Ji Yun, concerned for his well-being. Ultimately, after both of them discuss Ji Tai's new development, Li Ji Yun understands that what she can do best for him is just to support him with his new journey. We are then introduced to a few new characters as well. Shim Ha Min, a first year like Ji Tai who teaches him how to punch correctly through utilizing the pivot of the hips and the power of the legs, as well as the loosening of the shoulders before tensing up on impact. Mireya then teaches him the armbar, which she believes will be the winning move in the admission test that is set to occur two days from now. Unbeknownst to the both of them, Kim Dong Won is listening into the conversation. On the day of the admission test, we see Ji Tai psyching himself up for the eventual fight between him and Dong Won. But as he prepares to meet him, he feels a sense of terror and fear that leaves his hands shaking. Realizing the gravity of the situation that he is in fighting, he concludes that his that his endeavors and progress are all just delusions, and he questions himself on even pursuing such a task. Maria, seeing this, excuses herself for a moment, dragging along Ji Tai and attempting to give him a pep tour. Trying to bring him back to his senses, she slaps him before reassuring him that true strength comes from motivation, 
which is spurred by a desire that involves an individual's loved ones. In this case, his sister. Once more, he returns, his mind calm and ready to fight. The fight begins, with some heavy punches from Dong Wan, to which Ji Tai dodges and blocks. Remembering Maria's teaching, teachings, he checks a low kick before sprawling the attempted takedown. And round one ends. In the second round, Dong Wan throws a flurry of punches before attempting a clinch, to which Ji Tai attempts to respond via handbar. However, Dong Wan, knowing this, traps his foot before unloading a sickening left hook, knocking Ji Tai to the ground. Whilst on the ground, Ji Tai remembers the haunting memory of his father taking away his sister before facing his younger self, blood on their face, uttering how useless and pathetic he is. Fueled by his father's haunting words, he picks himself up, parrying a desperate straight from Dong Wang before punishing him with a left straight. Whilst on the ground from a blow by the upperclassmen, Ji Tai attempts a heel hook for the first time, replicating it in the videos that he has watched before this fight. In this moment, we can clearly see the gift that he has obtained from his father, his extremely strong aptitude in picking up fighting techniques with only minimal instructions. Yet, what he doesn't know is that the heel hook is illegal to use, and is thus disqualified. With dreams of finding his sister and becoming stronger, simply torn by the harsh words that he has lost. The next day, Maria, furious by this loss, attempts to overturn it, with the assistance of the coach, to seemingly no avail. Angered by this, she drags Dong Wong off to brutally beat him, demanding a confession to which he complies. Meanwhile, Ji Tai, seeking out the answers and reasoning behind Maria teaching him, stumbles upon her brutal beating of the wounded Dong Wan. Ji Tai tries to reason with her, and after a heated discussion, they eventually come to terms with one another. In this discussion, Maria reveals that his father killed her entire family, and she needs him to join Fight Class 3 for the chance to meet Dai Gak and kill him. We also learn that she has abdicated all her sponsorship money to allow Ji Tai to enter Fight Class 1, and hence, now she lives with him. Upon his introduction to into Fight Class 1, Ji Tai learns that he has made a handful of enemies through his connection with Maria. The class representative, Yo Yun So, greets him, providing him with the basic necessities that each student receives upon entry to the class, whilst reminding him of the danger that he is in. As Maria has easily defeated all of the classmen, there has been a divide in the opinions of people, either those who admire her and wish to grow as strong as her, and those seeking for revenge. As the days continue, Ji Tai clearly falls behind the rest of the pack, struggling to finish even with the most basic of exercises, since he has had no prior training. Yet, Maria's belief in him and his own fuels him to continue to persevere, despite the bullying that he must endure. Eventually, the ranking matches are announced, in which individuals must fight each other, of course. For classmates are divided into different groups, in which the top two of the preliminary round will go on to fight each other, whilst the losers are automatically ranked as D. Zhou Ji Tai is paired up with Kwon Tai Young, a woman who is a practitioner of the Kyokushin Karate. The day of the ranking match arrives, with Ji Tai up against Tai Young. Tai Young immediately leaps to him with a high kick to which he dodges, and dodges a series of punches and kicks. Drawing back, she intends to hit him again, to which he runs away, to the amazement of Shim Ha Min, as he cannot comprehend that Ji Tai has dodged every single one of the strikes. The first round ends, and in the second round, the same thing happens again. Ji Tai dodges a series of punches and closes in on her, to the shock of the audience, Yet, he does not exploit this opportunity, and instead chooses to back away, blocking another powerful hit from her, and a series of other punches and kicks, he sees that she is tiring, yet this is all an act from her to let his guard down. As he closes in again, attempting a flying armbar, she turns her head to block the leg from hooking over, hence accidentally turning the armbar into a kick. Tai Young turns up the pace, hitting him with every intention to hurt and ultimately catches him with a body blow that cracks his ribs and leaves him to lose his next two matches, ending up with a D rank. Following the conclusion of the tournament, we are given the backstory of Maria with her entry into the fight class as a pretty brutal story. 
Brutally beating all of the second years, she has them all expelled for the inadequacy by the chairman as he believes those without any value should simply be discarded. We see some fights between the other students and we see Ji-Tai learn the 1-2 combos with help from one of the coaches. He gets some more assistance with fighting from another coach as well as another one who gives him advice on how to use his anger as a means to fight with more ferocity and intent. This will become extremely useful for the upcoming fight with Okdon's bullies. Coinciding this training session, Okdon has found himself in quite some trouble, being bullied and used as a shuttle by some upperclassmen, who have taken his camera to be used as blackmail for him to do their bidding. This is due to him accidentally taking a photo of one of the female students in an inappropriate position, as well as taking photos of other fight class members without their permission. Lee ji Young, concerned for her friend, follows Ok Don to where the bullies gather, intent on obtaining evidence to bring the bullies to justice. Unfortunately, her phone chooses to ring at the wrong moment, and she is forced to confront the ringleader, Lim Hyung Chal. Saying some very harsh words to him, her actions spark him to punch her and beat up Ok Don. Coincidentally, Ji Tai arrives to see the entire spectacle and his unbridled anger at his friends beaten and on the ground causes him to lash out at the bullies. Punching Lim Hong Yang Chao on the face, he dodges other bullies punches before tackling them down onto the floor and just laying some ground and pound to them. Ji Eun, realizing the predicament that Ji Tai is in, immediately runs off to find Maria or anyone else that could help de-escalate the situation. In the meantime, after subduing the goons, Ji Tai prepares to face Hyang Chao. In this panel alone, we can glimpse the individual that Ji Tai will become. His intense focus and ferocity turning him into a fearsome fighter. But already sustaining injuries from the pre previous student, he is thrown to the concrete floor and rendered unable to move and function properly. With Hyang Chao's classmates restraining him, he is forced to watch Ok Dong get beaten up relentlessly, with Hyung Chao only stopping if Ji Tai was to beg and grovel, and in the end, Ji Tai does, frustrated at the notion that he is in such a pathetic state. But when all seems lost, someone shows up. In the end, the incident is settled, with one individual being expelled and the rest being suspended. Ji Tai is now left with a different perspective, and now it seems he has a resolute goal behind fighting. The next few days continue, with talks about the tournament. Matches play out, some people win and some people lose, but now we get more insight on the fight between Young Woon and Maria. Young Woon, a top competitor who has competed with one of the members of the flight class, Young Ki Hoon, seems to hold a grudge and he holds an intense disdain for Maria, proclaiming that he, he is justice incarnate. He vows to beat her and her accomplices, the members of the flight class. Taunting her, he throws a wild series of punches to which she dodges, and then he reveals his twisted personality, reveling in the sight of beating and crushing down people. His words about Ji Tai angers Maria and she responds with a devastating blow to the chin, fracturing the jaw, a knee to the face, fracturing the eye socket, an elbow to the head, fracturing his cervical spine, a blow to the face, breaking his nose, before finishing with an armbar, breaking his arm of course. Not gonna lie, I believe this fight was a bit overkill. Like, I think she could have done this a bit, approached it a little bit differently, but that's just how it plays out. After this brutal beating, the next fighter to face Maria will be Shim Hamin. But first of all, we are given a little backstory on him. Being called a prodigy all his life, Hamin fought himself to be the best. Yet after suffering a humiliating loss against Maria, he decided to train harder than ever to become like her, perhaps even beat her. And now we come to the final match of the rankings tournament to decide Shim Hamin's ranking, him against Maria. Remembering his first fight with her, he decides to draw similarities to her, calling upon the bloodlust. To fuel him even further, he strikes her with speeds that defy law and gravity, yet in the end he cannot keep up with her. As she exchanges blows with him, he realizes that he's simply outclassed, and with each blow that he receives, 
he grows further and further away from reaching Maria until he's just left kneeling into the snow. Looking at the footprints receding further and further away. In the aftermath of all of this, all the fighting, all the matches, all the tournaments, we see a heavily bandaged young Woon in the midst of a breakup with his girlfriend. Fearful of his personality and his enjoyment of beating others up, she chooses to cut off their relationship. And with her fleeing away, there is a sudden shift, a change in the trajectory of the Manhua, complemented with his hideous expression on his face. We then cut back to Ji Tai training with Maria and other individuals alongside Shim Hamin requesting to join Fight Class 3. However, his decision to join seems to be intervened through the introduction of another character, the broadcasting president, Kang Yuri, a student bold enough to challenge the underlying corruption that lingers in the school. She tells him the story behind Maria's strength, her winning Val Tudor at only 16 and the origins of Val Tudor in Korea. Being related to Walid Barbosa, a renowned martial artist with 460 matches fought and also a disciple of the judo legend Kano Hideo, he created his own martial arts, Barbarado Jujutsu. He taught this to his family, however, an unfortunate fire took away nearly all of their lives. This family were also the ones who refused to host Val Tudor. A coincidence? I think not. And Maria is Barbosa's youngest daughter and the only survivor of this incident. By pointing this out, Kang Yuri tries to get Hamin to understand that Maria's strength lies in herself, not Fight Class 3 or Val Tudo. But Hamin still does not understand why Maria would teach Ji Tai and not himself, and firmly in his belief, still wants to join Fight Class 3. This is when Tai Young appears, adamant to change Hamin's mind through fighting him. After a series of blows I exchange, with Harmin's fist breaking upon contact with Tai Yan's fist, Harmin relents, choosing not to join Fight Class 3 as he still believes he does not have the full capabilities yet. From here on, there is a gradual change in the direction that the Manhua is travelling. Here we get to focus on Ji Tai's unravelling and his inner psyche as he delves deeper and deeper into the depravity of fighting. It all begins with Maria telling Ji Tai that he needs experience, hence he needs to start street fighting. Finding a commotion down the alley, Ji Tai attempts to initiate a fight to the amusement of the two thugs. Maria takes a different approach. Dashing forward, she punches the black hair thug, brutalizing his face with her foot before finishing off. She then threatens the other member to fight Ji Tai, else he gets killed. With the thug charging at him, Ji Tai is forced to fight. Despite his excellent kinetic vision, allowing him to dodge the incoming punches, Ji Tai still has never properly been in many fights, hence he cannot account for the unpredictable factors that may occur. The loose brick in this case has him slipping. Out of sheer luck or desperation, he grabs the thug's shirt, dragging him down to the ground. And with Maria's exasperated cry to finish him, Ji Tai gets into the mount position, hammering the person below with blows to the face. After this fight, Maria reprimands him, stating that he should not pity the person, as in the fighting world, it's either kill or be killed, and defeat can lead to death beyond humiliation and dishonor. With that in mind, she leaves Ji Tai to his own devices. Back at home, Ji Tai cannot sleep at all. With conflicting emotions swirling in his head as he tries to justify his violence towards a complete stranger, he starts questioning his very own purpose in fighting. Repulsed by the notion of breaking and beating another person, he fears for the monster that he may become, calling upon his long lost sister in a desperate attempt to soothe these burning doubts. But it seems like he has made up his mind as he continues to fight on the streets, implementing road work as well. Ji Tai seems resolute on fighting, as that is what he believes is the only way for him now. Choi Young Jun, one of the members of Fight Class and a high ranking fighter, A rank, is seen departing from a karaoke building with a woman in tow. All of a sudden, he gets a call from one of his friends and thus intervenes on in the fight between Ji Tai and the students. 
Trying to steer them away as he recognizes Maria and Jitai, he tells his friends to forget about this whole ordeal. But Maria makes him an offer that he cannot refuse. If he wins against Jitai, she will kneel on the ground and apologize, and he can even punch her and beat her up as much as he wants. And hence, he accepts the fight. Throwing a few punches to which Jitai dodges, Jitai realizes the threat that Yang Jun poses to him. Trying to weave out of Yong Jun's punches, Yong Jun suddenly exclaims to someone behind Jitai, but as soon as he turns, he is greeted by Maria calling him an idiot before Yong Jun's punch lands. Yong Jun continues the offensive, stopping Jitai's takedown before elbowing him hard in the back. As Jitai falls down upon the ground, he sees shards of glass lying there. Thoughts of using it come swirling to his mind, but he ultimately tells Yong Jun to be careful, effectively neutralizing any other types of attack that involve ground game. Knowing this still won't be enough, he asks for Maria's headband, turns on the music, and starts imitating Bang Jae Yum, a fighter that has defeated Yong Jun in one of his ranking matches and the girl that Yong Jun likes. The very comedic facial expressions that Ji Tai displays perhaps foreshadows what he will become like in the future, in which his insanity and craziness will push him to do the most absurd of things. Growing extremely aggravated, Yong Jun starts to act irrationally, swinging wildly which allows Ji Tai to slip him close to his body and deliver an extremely effective body blow, raining a flurry of blows to try to gas out the tired Yang Jun. Ji Tai emulates Maria's face grab before unleashing a vertical punch to the ribs of Yang Jun. In the next chapter, we are given an explanation on how martial arts works. Three main points. Use, application, and utilization. Human beings in dire circumstances are forced to utilize whatever means to survive, and their skills are forced to mature in order for them to be utilized for survival. Yet, Jidai has had no need for the two prior points. He has the ability to go straight to the utilization of skills through simply just looking at them. There is a flashback to Maria asking how Jitai has learned the heel hook, to which he responds with by watching a video. Maria then demonstrates a hook kick, then asks Jitai to replicate this, to which he fails spectacularly. Realizing that Jitai has inherited his father's gift, her mind flashes back to the despair and trauma that has always been associated with the mention of Zhou Dai Gak, and the epiphany on why her father chose Dai Gak as a student to pass on his teachings despite having a vow to never pass his teachings on to a foreign person. Confronted with this and with a whirlwind of emotions, she watches indifferent as Ji Tai's nose is broken, and then she grips him by the hair telling him to fight with a cold expression on her face. Perplexed by her indifference towards Jitai, Yang Jun beats down on Jitai until he calls it quits, sick of beating basically a human punching bag. As the moon ascends into the night sky, Maria is seen sliding to the ground and Jitai coughing on the ground, a truly pitiful sight. The next chapter, we get a flashback of Jitai's life with his mother and sister. Despite the happy upbringing they had, there was a sense of something wrong, as Ji Tai and his sister were never allowed to go outside other than him going to school, always remaining in the house from then on after that. Yet, this did not deter them from having their own fun and playing around. Suddenly, he wakes up, to Ji Yun waiting for him, worry in her eyes. When she questions his injuries, he deflects the question, and she suddenly realizes that this is not the Ji Tai she knows. Angry at his constant fighting, she shouts, why must he be so reckless? And now we see Ji Tai's emotions erupt. Clear disbelief in his voice, he angrily shouts that he hates fighting and that it hurts him so much to inflict pain onto other people. Of course it would, having your life change before you in only a couple of months. Going from a kid at school not even knowing how to fight to being surrounded by blood, violence and the certainty of death. Now we see Ji Tai's desperation. Thinking of this as the only way to find his long lost sister, he understands the sacrifice he must make. Yet, he also questions his self worth, constantly berating himself for being so weak. 
There is a heavy melancholy in the air as he calls out for Ji Hyung, but only silence remains. The exams roll by and there is a clear contrast in the tone and overall atmosphere of the manhua. Comedy and humour is used to cut through the depressive atmosphere of the previous chapters and perhaps signal a finality before a spiralling descent. Maria and Ji Tai are currently at the checkpoint towards a large industrial area known as the tunnels. When a huge bodyguard appears, Ji Tai is quick to dispatch him. Already, the atmosphere surrounding Ji Tai is different. He feels more unhinged, more reckless and wilder. Already, Ji Tai's mental state is threatening to collapse, and this is reinforced by the repeated bashing of the rock on a person's face, to which even Maria, known for her brutality, has to intervene. But now with Jitai uttering these words, he cements himself as Maria's dog, willing to do anything for her as perhaps the ability to think about his actions and justifications for them poses too much of a toll on his mind. We also see that there is a fight club in this broken area, and two of the fight class 3 members, Yang ki Hoon and Lee ja Kian, are betting on the fighters. Switching back, we see Jitai beating other members, those that reside in the tunnels. When Maria checks up on him, touching his face and telling him not to push himself, he swats her hand away, walking away, a pile of bodies behind him. We are then introduced to two of the members of Red Hell, one of the gangs that operate in the tunnels, and these people are known as the Twins. Extremely strong, they stand guard when Jitai and Maria pass through to the gates again. The fight that ensues between them is short and brief. Maria knocks one out in one punch and with the loss of his brother, the other twin easily crumbles to Jitai. In the moment where the brother begs Jitai to stop, we see a now merciless Jitai telling him how people like them, thinking that they are all tough are just all pathetic in the end. A bounty is set onto both of them, with many of the members from Red Hill rushing to find the location of Jitai and Maria. Chitai and Maria are found eating lunch, with many of the Red Hell members surrounding them. But the two restaurant owners, Bob Soft and Jimsy, plan to bail these two out. With the help of a fire extinguisher, they are able to clear a path for Maria and Chitai to run out, into the tunnel. Whilst delving deeper and deeper into the tunnel, Maria realises that this tunnel reminds her of a favela, her place of birth. A lawless land riddled with murders, drug trades and gambling, killing and extortion, this tunnel, like the favela, has a filthy stench, the stench of rotten corpses. The conversation is interrupted by a hulking figure, murmuring kill the lights. Already on the offensive, Maria knees him in the gut, elbowing his face before unleashing a flurry punches and the knee to the face. The giant stumbles, uttering the words Maria and they realise that this is Young Woon. We are immediately pulled into memories of Young Woon and the aftermath of the breakup. We see him contemplating Kim hye last words that he was not different from them before responding with an outright refusal. Justifying his actions through the victim's suffering, he believes that violence was necessary to defeat the evil permeating throughout the world and hence he chooses to undergo the experiment and the operation, seeking to go stronger to fight against that evil. Cutting back to the fight, we see an extremely fearful Maria, and then we are taken back to her memories of a fighter with similar scars to Young Woon and with burn scars, possibly her relative. So lost in her own mind, Maria believes that Young Woon and that mysterious person are one and the same. Young Win takes advantage of a preoccupied and disorientated Maria, smashing her and slamming her face to the wall. Knocking her down, he slams both of his fists onto her stomach, breaking her ribs and bruising her diaphragm. Jitai tackles Young Win before realizing the predicament that he is in right now. Surrounded by a mound of skulls and corpses, his mind shatters, fear consuming his very being. This is the start of his descent. Trying to resist the defense mechanism of fear that tries to take a hold of his mind and body, he responds with the only emotion that can rule and overthrow fear, and that is rage. 
screaming to himself to stop shaking. He claws desperately at his own face, tearing it apart and letting streams of blood flow from the rivets caused by his nails. And now he has begun the plunge, into the depths and depravity of the fighting world. Utilizing any means to survive, he uses a discarded skull, hitting the back of Young Woon's head before ripping out his eye. His superhuman rage enables him to keep fighting ferociously, taking hit after hit before delivering his own blows. The juxtaposition of his classmates having a fun time contrasting his brutal death fight highlights how far Jitai has fallen from the normal world. There is a sense of unimaginable sadness watching him fight, knowing the boy he was mere months ago. The daily and fun activities of high school life starkly contrasting this brutal and grotesque fight leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. With the fight drawing to an end, Jitai slams down and starts to drown. Maria, having regained consciousness, tries to reach him, successfully gripping onto Young Woon's head, snapping his neck and killing him. Maria is then seen trying to resurrect Jitai, with each breath causing excruciating pain, she manages to revive him, and he is seen emerging out of the tunnel, a horrible mess. In the hospital room, as he sits there and Maria lies in her bed, there is a discussion with Lee Hyung Go and the big mountain gang on what to do with him, and that is, send him to Fight Club. In the scenes where we see Ji Tai, we can see he is clearly suffering from extreme trauma, hiding behind the veil of insanity. When you meet Lily Hyung Go, he acts wild and crazy, screaming at the nurse before doing an entire 180, begging on the ground. When seeing on a bench, he remembers the face of Young Woon. Clearly, Ji Tai is suffering from some sort of PTSD. With Maria in hospital and needing money, he makes the decision to join Fight Club. As he makes his way to the tunnel's entrance, he is stopped by a group of members, individuals that he recognizes as those that bullied Okton. Easily dispatching the other members, he goes to confront Lim Hyang Chou. Ji Tai is clearly much more skilled now, but that perhaps comes at the loss of his psyche. When Hyang Chou questions to why Ji Tai is here, perhaps to serve justice, Ji Tai bursts out laughing, exclaiming that he is only here to kill him because he feels like shit right now. He kicks and punches Hyang Chao, saying gibberish while laughing a lot. In this panel here, we can see that Ji Tai has truly lost it, jumping around and acting all goofy and all that stuff. When Hyang Chao tries to tackle him, he rips off Ji Tai's shirt. And now we see Ji Tai's physique. Born out of the hellish training, Ji Tai has grown from a weak boy to an extremely strong individual. We are confirmed that Ji Tai indeed suffers from post traumatic stress disorder from a flashback, and we also can see his first meetings with Ji Young. Then we turn to Ji Young and we are let into a dark secret of hers that all she wanted was him or for him was to stay weak as she was fearful of change from him. And her regret is intensified by this grisly pan of him sitting among a pile of blood and bandages. Yet, behind this veil of insanity, we get a glimpse of his true thoughts about fighting still, and perhaps a semblance of his old self, still furious at the notion of those that view themselves as superior and their changing of attitudes when things go south. And once again, he tells them the pain of fighting, and he reminds the girl of the consequences of staining your hands. We are given a perfect phrase to describe Jitai Bali Hyangol. Clearly a person knowledgeable or has an expertise in psychology. He is, as he quotes, a loaded gun living in insanity, not fearing death since he has already died. His actions and his demeanor clearly defies the natural order of life itself. Conversations between Ji Tai and Li Hyang Go play out, as well as with a girl, Jiang Bomi, previously a member of Red Hell. She tells him about the two main fighters from Red Hell, Sunny Jia, number one fighter of Red Hell and a Mu Tai tactician, and Li Chang, a virtual psychopath, both juiced to the gills with steroids. But when she offers Ji Tai some drugs, he responds with outrage, remembering the body of Yang Wun and Ojin's unholy operation on him. 
The day of the death match arrives, much to the excitement of the crowd and the depravity of them. There is a lot on the line here, with Holgo's arm being shackled and used as one of the bets. The fight immediately starts off with Ji Tai punching the commentator and slamming the mic across Li Chung's face. Taking advantage of Chung's confusion, he gets him to the floor, biting his fingers while smacking the mic again and again into Chung's face. The dull thudding of the mic riles up the crowd and they scream for Chung's death, their excitement and their bloodlust perhaps shocking Ji Tai. Surrounded by those that chant for death without recognizing the pain one must go through in order to fight, he screams for them to shut up, attacking the crowd. Li Chang, still in the fight, runs up, punching Ji Tai in the face. After head and body blows are exchanged, Ji Tai tries to pluck out his eye, and he does. Fighting without any care to his opponent, he aims a throat punch, ripping Chang's nose with his teeth before following with a nut shot. Wrapping his legs around his head, he triangle chokes him out, and the two VIP guests of Fight Club, Yang Ki Hoon and Li Jia Kiang, recognize him as Maria's lapdog. As Chang's body lies on the ground, he starts throffing from the overdose of drugs. But thanks to the quick thinking of Bommy, she administers the antidote, and Ji Tai wins the fight for Steelworks, the group opposing Red Hell. In the meantime, Yang Ki Hoon. Recognizing Ji Tai as one of the students of Nam Il High School, proposes a deal to the two groups that Ji Tai should have a rematch with Sunny. An extremely big gambler, he believes that he can make bank with this fight. Cutting back to Sunny Ja, the Red Hell boss is witnessing a large hulking man with a bike helmet beating people up. We learn that he has had an operation and Sunny Ja is called up to face him. In the aftermath of this fight, the man is clearly brutally killed a fist through his visor and through his head, and the Red Hell boss tells Sunny to go kill Ji Tai in this match. In the next filler chapters, we see the history of O Jin and Hyang Go, both brilliant but young boys residing in the tunnels. Curious and fascinated by books, they often had many debates with each other. We then have a reunion with the newly changed Ji Tai and Ji Yun. Initially shocked by the numerous scars on his face, she bears witness to his fragile mind. In this moment, she can see that he is about to break, so she just plays along with him, fearing that if she were to push him with just a little bit, he would go to the point of no return. Once again, we are brought into the recurring nightmare that is Ji Tai's life as he envisions an armless and bloody Hyang Go screaming for his arm back. So scared, he seeks Maria for comfort, and then recounts running through the tunnel, a moment of self-reflection, of understanding that he was in hell and that something inside him died, turns into a bout of anger and anguish as he still does not understand the reason why Maria saved him. After crying for his sister and unleashing his anger, he turns to himself, wishing he were dead. The stage is set. The depraved crowd is here, betting their entire lives, screaming for bloodshed. The groups gather. Sunny is here as well as the two members from Fight Class 3. And then, once again, Hyang Go is sat on an elevated platform, his arm bounded and binded by chains. And then comes the main character, Ji Tai. A master of psychological warfare, Ji Tai has his eyes and nose pulled back with tape and a stretchy hat, a bright green shirt exclaiming his love to Sunny Ja. He turns on the audience and beats him up, cementing himself as a crazy and deranged individual in the eyes of many. His sickness and ugliness disgusts Sunny, and she resolves to destroy him. The next few panels, we learn of how Sunny acquired her monstrous strength. Training with the construction workers, themselves hailing from Thailand, and each an experienced veteran in Muay Thai, they train Sunny. Now with each of them being in the ring, they adopt their own fighting stance. Sunny's a classic Muay Thai guard, and Ji Tai's a mockery of a crane stand. A bit of humour cutting through the grim atmosphere of this fight. Throwing a board at Sunny, he dashes in, intending to throw a punch, and is met with a strong teep kick to the face, which sends him flying. Now, extremely cautious, he starts yelling at the crowd, catching Sunny off guard with a punch. He dodges a lethal elbow. When she tries to initiate a clinch, her hand slips from his neck, and he responds with a devastating knee that breaks her nose and effectively shuts down her breathing. She low kicks him, and when he goes in to swing again, he drops. As they exchange blows and the fight continues, 
Jita realizes that the difference in skill is too wide. She counters him again and again, and he starts to make predictable moves. But also, both of them start to tire. As Jitai drops to the ground again and suddenly stumbles back, the crowd urges her to continue, the twisted face symbolizing the twisted heart, only begging for blood and their priority, money. In the moment of vulnerability, we see Jitai with tears in his eyes, and Sunny, seeing this, instinctively hugs him to the shock of the crowd. Taking advantage, he knees her in the face, when she suddenly charges up, unleashing or unveiling a different form. We pan to the Red Hell boss, telling Yang Ki Hoon that his fighters are preparing for Valtudo, just like them. Ji Tai, realizing that once again the gap in their strength has widened, understands the futility of this fight. It seems like there is no winning for him now. He prepares for the blow, asking Sunny to tell Maria that he fought well, and with a devastating punch, he sinks into the darkness. We are taken back to a conversation with Hyang Go and Ji Tai about violence, with a particular phrase coming to Ji Tai's mind in that you can act evil because you're good, Ji Tai's mouth stretches into a smirk. As we sink into his mind, we see flashes of him and his sister, and we see him wanting to give up on his goal of finding her. With a torrent of emotions pouring out of him, he confesses that the only reason he was putting up these posters was to appease the guilt at her having been taken away from him. In fact, he was just hoping she lived a good life. All of those excuses and lies were simply trying to avoid knowing that he was a broken individual deep down inside. He reinforces this by eating the paper, believing to have erased his problems forever. But the influence of Maria's teachings still consumes his mind. The ghastly shadow of her appears over a frail and weak Jitai, chastising him for being ignorant again. She tells him to familiarize himself with the suffering to gain the confidence to face reality. Rather than running away, go deeper, pick apart the scars, delve into your memory. What are you running away from? Jitai screams in pain as he recounts his decision his choice to let his mum die. The woman with the knife, the mother of the fighter that his father, Zhou Dai Gak, killed in the ring, comes looking for revenge, and he himself led her to his mother's death. And with this repressed memory being buried so long, and now resurfacing alongside Ojin's narration of individuals breaking their biological limits, we see a now awakened Jitai. Now understanding of what he must do, Killing his father and saving his sister to atone for the sin of having killed his mother, he tells the outcome of the fight, him killing her for her having failed to kill him. Sunny launches a powerful fist to which he easily dodges. Despite Sunny's inhuman speed, Jitai clearly sees all her blows and we get to see Yang Ki Hoon exclaiming that Jitai is starting to act like his owner. This sentence here clearly refers to Jitai's beliefs of freedom. Having been initially chained down by his haunting past, Jitai can now freely control his own life. With Sunny's drugs wearing out and fear consuming her entire being, she screams at him. They begin to exchange an onslaught of punches. Throwing wildly, desperation bleeding into her entire fighting style, she screams for her life, clearly resembling more of an animal than human. Jitai just laughs, meeting her blow for blow, then all is quiet. We are met with a broken and unconscious Sunny, Jitai holding her, singing his merry little tune. He throws her to the floor, to the cheers of the crowd. As he revels in the pain that tears at his limbs, he feels euphoric for feeling pain equates to being human. Yet, what he does next shocks Hyango and the other members of Steelworks. Uncaring of whether his ties are with Steelworks or not, and the outcome of the fight, he starts brutally stomping Sunny's face, his own one of joy as he plans to kill her. Kang Gi Hoon is unable to hold his laughter as he has predicted this outcome of the fight, egging him on to fulfill this bet. 
and this is where it ends, at least for me at the moment. I've put off this manhwa for quite a while now to let the chapters stack up a little bit. Fight Class 3 is honestly such an enjoyable read in my opinion. It's been really hard to find any manhwas or mangas that replicate the roller coaster of emotions that I feel when I read this. Uh, thanks to PTL JBY and JMS A Malb Hyman for the translations as well, and Matt Web2 and Ankan Akan the used 6893 for the organization of the chapters. Uh, yeah, sorry for that butchering. I'll see you guys soon, I think.